an RV air conditioner here today and uh, this thing obviously has a really dirty coil but I don't think that's the primary cause of our issues uh, if you feel the tubes going down the side here they're warm towards the top and fairly cool towards the bottom the thing I'm noticing here is that well, this uh, tube coming back to the compressor is somewhat cool but it's not sweating at all this, uh, there's a possibility this thing might be low on the refrigerant. Over on this side we've got the nameplate. And uh, we can see on here that it says we are running R410A. That's real good. And it holds 12 ounces. So as you can see inside of here we got some ice build up on this thing. System here to fan only because we want that coil to melt off so we'll come back here in a bit once that coil is indeed melted off we'll turn the fan to on over here on the opposite side so the ice has melted off of this coil so we're gonna put a line tap on this unit right here and you can see there's a little tag here of tubing coming off the side and those are kind of designed for that tap to be able to put on it you want to put it on the suction line which is this line coming back from the evaporator coil uh, to be able to check this thing well we don't really need uh, to go on the high side right now so we're just gonna put a line tap right here I'll show you exactly how to do that a line tap is just a little device that allows you to access uh, the system but because for some reason the manufacturers don't put ports on these things I think it's just another point of failure and also keeps uh, the general populace from attempting to monkey with it which is probably a good thing uh, that's the other thing I should mention is you should not be doing this if you're not certified to do so. But I'll link in the description to these taps if you're looking for them. <laughs> so here is what come in these kits. There's a couple different sizes that I have here. We've got uh, this one that is for up to three-eighths, quarter to three-eighths. And uh, this one is from half to five-eighths. So we're going to uh, be using the smaller one. Open it up here and... Show you what it comes with. So here's the tap itself. You take out these screws to get that apart, and then you have two redu size reducers to reach that quarter and five sixteenths sizes that it is compatible with. But today we're we're using it on three eighths, so we won't have to change the size. So we'll just pull out these screws here. So I got this off of here. Now when we put this thing on here, you want to make sure that the copper is nice and clean, which this one actually is already nice and clean, so we don't need to do anything to that. But I always put this on here when the pipe is curving away from the side with the seal, because if you put it this way, it's going to be more likely to have a concave you know, shape here where that piece of rubber is not going to seal correctly, so if you put it on this side, you have a much better chance of it sealing well. The other thing you should pay attention to is making sure that it's going to still fit in your enclosure. In which case, uh, I might have to move this a little bit different. On the side like this is probably okay too. We'll go close enough where it's uh, not going to uh, be affected by this bent part of the tube. All right, so we'll use this handy dandy wrench here. Now I did end up facing this out, uh, but I was able to just gently bend this tubing over just a little bit. There's a little bit of give in it, so you're okay with that, uh, just to make enough room for this port to go on here. And we'll painstakingly tighten these up until that is totally closed across there. There's, there's no gap at all. And right here on the bottom, there's one more Allen screw spot. And right there, we just gotta thread this all the way in until it fully seats and stops. I should do it this way. And that's going to make a little pinhole in the copper tubing so that we can access it. So we'll crank it all the way down. All right, so we fully seated that, and now when we loosen this, it should, yep it opens that valve. So now we're ready to put our gauges onto this unit. And then when you're done using this line tap, you just simply close it like we closed it just now, and then put your cap on here to make sure that you don't have any uh, leakage ongoing. And that's pretty much it. It's how you use one of these 
little line tap things. Again, link in the description if you're looking for them. I'll link a couple different sizes. You just have to know which size uh, pipe you're working with, and they work pretty good. Before you take any pressure readings or make any changes to refrigerant, it is very important that you kind of pay attention to uh, the airflow. So if you have a dirty air filter or you have vents that are closed or you have a block condenser coil like we had up there, you want to check all those things first. And then we discovered that it was froze up, so we made sure that that all melted off correctly. And uh, then after you do all those things, then we turn it on again and actually check the pressures and check the refrigerant levels. If you don't do those things first, then you'll end up adding refrigerant when you maybe don't need it. If you didn't know that it was froze up, sometimes it can freeze up because of a dirty coil and then you add refrigerant to a system that was already had the right amount of Freon in it, it was just froze up so it wasn't showing you, it wasn't acting like it had the right amount of Freon. So we'll go ahead and put our gauges on here. You guys want to turn these things on. Um, you always want to zero the gauges to relieve the pressure unlike that. See how there was pressure in that hose? Now this uh, gauge is slightly out of calibration. That's the high side gauge. We're not going to use that anyway, but it, so it's fine. But when you turn these things on, they automatically calibrate to atmospheric pressure. So now we will be able to take a reading on how much pressure is in the system. Oh, there went my little wrench. And when we open this valve right here, there's just a little Allen access port thing. Just crack that open and then that will give us a reading of what our current pressures are. It's still going up yet. So we have quite a lot of pressure in there. And that stopped at 245 PSI. But that's kind of irrelevant because the unit is not running. All that's telling us, if we go to uh, 410A here, that the ambient temperature is about 82 degrees, which is pretty cool, because that's probably about what it is here in the shade, and that's what the temperature of the Freon is. So that's what the pressure, corresponding pressure is. Uh, Ruben got the coil cleaned off here, so that's good to go on the condensing coil. And we're gonna clean this uh, evaporator coil just a little bit more. We've got a little bit of junk towards the bottom edge here. All right, the coil's pretty much brushed out now, so we're going to uh, put this back on here and turn the unit on and kind of analyze our pressures and see what the thing is doing. So our unit is started up here now. So we'll monitor our pressure. And right now we're already down to 42 PSI, which is uh, definitely low. But we do need to give the unit a few minutes to acclimate and for the pressures to average out. Uh, this is a critically charged system, so it's using a capillary tube or a fixed regulating device. Uh, it does not have a thermal expansion valve, so it uh, it relies solely on the pressures and temperatures of the coils and the ambient temperature to force the right amount of Freon into the unit. So it takes a little while for it to kind of average out uh, pressures a little bit more. So we'll give it a couple minutes and see where it's at. So after running for a couple minutes, you can see that we're up to 62 PSI, or about 10 degrees on the evaporator, so that's the temperature that the Freon is initially evaporating at. That should be above 32 for sure, but closer to 40 degrees, so we're definitely low on refrigerant, or there's an issue with the, uh, the capillary tube, but I'm pretty sure it's probably just a little bit low. So we're going to bleed some of the refrigerant off, but before we do that, or not refrigerant, bleed the air out of the lines just kind of get it started on the tank and leave it loose and then open your valve and then just bleed that air out of the line so then we tighten this uh, fitting up here so it's no longer uh, bleeding off and we'll close the valve here to before we get started and now we'll open the valve on the tank and that just pressurizes that hose between there and the gauges now we'll take the tank and set it upside down on the scale. And then press the tear button to uh, zero the scale so we know where we're starting. Alright, so now we're ready to charge. As soon as I open this valve here, it will start to charge the unit. Now you want to remind yourself of how much 
Caprion it holds. In this case, it's at 12 ounces we talked about earlier. So we definitely know we don't want to add 12 ounces because it has some Freon in it. This is kind of a uh, balancing act here to get this as close as possible to the correct charge. So we'll go ahead and start charging it here a little bit. And you want to go really slow, just as slow as possible. I was saying that's really high pressure, but just this little um, line tap does not have a very big access port, so it doesn't go in through it very fast. So I'd say we'll add probably six ounces and then check what it's doing. So put in just a little bit over six ounces. You can see that it went negative, obviously, because the tank got lighter as the Freon went into the air conditioner. And we're running at 121 PSI or 40 degrees. So that's just about perfect. I'm gonna add just a little bit more, like maybe one ounce or so, uh, just to bring it up a little bit more because this, this system has a, a very minuscule leak. I'm not sure what year this system is, but uh, the serial number looks like it might be a 2011. I don't know for sure though. Uh, but anyway, since this unit was manufactured, it's lost about six ounces of Freon. That's almost nothing. And uh, to find that leak is very unlikely. So add a little bit extra and then it'll, it'll keep a pretty decent um, charge for probably a long time to come. So there we have it. This coil, you can, I can feel that it just, it's really warm to the touch, hot almost, uh, and it's pulling off a lot more heat than it was before, and uh, this uh, tube coming back to the compressor is sweating. So we know that we've got a good charge in here now. Hopefully this will last a long time. That's pretty much it. That's the troubleshooting process here. All I've got left to do now is uh, take the gauges off, we'll close the valve on the tank, and then put the rest of the Freon that was in that hose into the unit so we don't vent that that refrigerant and then uh, take this off close that valve there on the bottom of that uh, access port put the cap on it put it back together and we're good to go any other thoughts we miss anything that's pretty much everything so if this video helped you out please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe down below for more videos just like this one hit that bell icon if you want to be notified about future videos and actually get the notification, otherwise you probably won't hear anything about it. Uh, right? Because you get notifications for your subscriptions? Uh, not for yours, I don't think. I'm pretty sure I'm subscribed, though. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we'll see what happens with that. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you in the next video. See ya. All the tools that I use in my videos, I'll try to link in the description if they're kind of ones that I feature in the video. So check the description if you're looking for tools for doing this sort, this sort of work, and uh, they'll be down there for your convenience. All right.